welcome Dr. Deo Parkview. It's so lovely to be with you once again this morning in our second week of our resilience series. I hope you are finding courage to bounce back in whatever circumstance you might find yourself. We had such an amazing time on Wednesday with our resilience investment. The thing that stood out is that oftentimes we're closer to the brink of burnout than what we realize. Join us next Wednesday for amazing tools and wonderful inspiration on how to bounce back from difficult times. Now that you know what happened at Dr. Day of Parkview, let's take a look at what's happening in the family and watch this video from Dr. Day of Wonder Worm. It's a good day Parkview. It's a, a privilege this morning to speak to you on uh, what we are doing here in the north side of Pretoria. It's also great to see what you guys did and still doing for your community. So some of our team members are going to give you feedback on how we are ministering to our uh, community. Right at the start of the lockdown, we felt it pressed upon our hearts to care for our immediate community. We came up with the idea of creating a mossy box, a sparrow box, which we just would place some donations in and, and to provide food for a family which had a loss of income or which had no income at all. We went out to our partners in the church and we asked them for donations so that we could care and to make this dream of the Mossy Box possible. We asked everybody in our church to, to ask your neighbor or, or any, anybody in the immediate community, do you have any need, do you need any food? We were able as a campus to provide for them. We were also able to make a tremendous impact in the education department. And yet to tell you more about that is Adam. That's it. During the lockdown period, we had the privilege and the opportunity to really bless the teachers of the two high schools in our mm. direct community. Uh, so it's Wurschkel Wonderboom and Wurschkel Uferkrein. And we had the privilege to, to bless them with a hug and a mug and, uh, and a cup with a short message on it. Um, that, that speaks about being fearless and to be a, a fearless teacher in the environment and in the, in the space that we are at the moment. Uh, another thing that we had the privilege to do for Wurschkel Wonderboom is to create their virtual open day. So we spoke to the head boy, the head girl, the principal, and they have this mascot. Uh, and we created an, an entire video for the um, grade seven learners to watch and to, to learn more about the school. And what a great privilege we had to really impact the community in such a way. Another place where we are involved with in the schools is, is the safety precautions. So in the mornings, we, we help with the screenings and um, just to see that everything goes according to the regulations at the moment. And what a great place to also be involved with. So that was our story so far. Uh, we believe that God will provide for us for every need in our community. And we pray for you and so that you guys also will know that whatever your need is, God will provide for that. Bless you, have a nice week uh, and enjoy God's work in your community. This morning, we are going to unlock our praise and worship our King together. I'm a 
shout his praise boundless grace love untamed i will sing and shout his praise boundless grace love untamed i will sing and shout his praise boundless grace love this morning Lord Jesus you're truly worthy of all praise all honor all glory Lord you tell us in your word that we need to guard our hearts because from our hearts flow the essence of life so we bring our hearts before you this morning Lord and we pray that you would just speak into our hearts the truth that you want us to hear about who you are and what you're busy doing we present our lives before you Lord Come and speak your truth.
most high your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you our Christ what a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my King what a beautiful name it is nothing compares to this what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus come on let's say it he didn't want a fan without Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name
Lord, what a beautiful name. Jesus, the name of Jesus above all others. Lord, this morning we just worship you and honor you as the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the one our hearts adore. Thank you, Father, for your power in us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for encouraging us this morning. Thank you, Father, that we can just come and pour out our hearts before you. We honor you. We worship you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. What a beautiful name to worship, the name of Jesus Christ. If you have prayer requests or praise reports this morning, I want to encourage you to, to send us that in the chat right now or follow the link so that we can pray with you during this week. And it's our time now to bring our offering. God loves the cheerful giver. And in this morning, He encourages us once again to bring what we have and trust Him that the little that we have in our hands, He's got the ability to multiply and make much of it, to build His kingdom so that the, the bride of Christ can be stronger than any ever before in this time. Joe Struefeld from our Hatfield campus here in Pretoria is going to share with us today about resilience from the Word of God. You are going to ruin your life and it's going to collapse with a mighty crash. <laughs> now, those are great words to start a sermon with, but those are actually some of the last words of Jesus in one of his most famous addresses, the Sermon on the Mount. So let me just back up. Hi there, Doxedo Parkview. It's great to be with you guys. Uh, my name is Joe. I'm part of the Doxedo Hatfield team. And we in a sermon series where we are speaking about resilience. What does it mean to be resilient, especially in a time like this? We're in a once in a lifetime moment and we are all asking for what it means to have a resilient core, a resilient mind, a resilient heart, a resilient spirit. And here Jesus comes and he says something so provocative, so it's so intrusive in our lives. Why would he do that? And I think the reason is as he's wrapping up, as any good public speaker would, as he's wrapping up his sermon, he's now in these last couple of chapters and verses, he is connecting with his hearers' hearts. Not just their minds, but their hearts. And he's digging into this old idea. Proverbs 4.23 famously says, God, your what? Your heart above all else. Why? For it determines the course of your life. And he makes this prediction that if you go in a certain direction, you will see your heart and your life therefore collapse. You know, many years ago, my family for, for ages, we went to this one holiday destination. I knew the streets and that little town so well, the homes and the people. And then one year, a flash flood tore right through that town. And homes that had been standing there for ages in a moment got destroyed. And the thing is, I mean, what was devastating is no one expected it. But that's the difference with what Jesus is saying. He's not saying it's devastating and you won't see it coming. He's making a prediction. If you go down this road, you can expect a collapse. So what does it mean to have a resilient heart that leads to a resilient life? Open up your Bible with me to... Uh, the Gospel according to Matthew, that's the first book in your New Testament. And let's dig into this moment together. So verse 24, Jesus says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain fell, the rivers rose, and the winds blew and pounded that house. Yet it didn't collapse because its foundation was on the rock but he says but everyone who hear these words of mine and doesn't act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand the rain fell the rivers rose the winds blew and pounded that house and it collapsed it collapsed with a great crash that's those famous words of his but verse 28 he says when jesus had finished saying these things the crowds were astonished at his teaching why because he was teaching them like one who had authority and not like the scribes jesus makes it clear the way to a resilient life is having a resilient heart and he makes 
three statements about this. What are the elements of a resilient heart? First, he says it has to have a foundation. Secondly, what is the thing that motivates you in that direction? And thirdly, what is the expectation that you have for it? So let's look at that. What's the foundation of a resilient heart? There's this world famous engineer, Alan Popel, and I've loved his story over the years. Um, at this moment, he works on some of the most cutting edge engineering feats we've ever attempted. But his story starts many years ago. He says, you know, typical of high school, they once had this little contest. They would give you all these raw materials like spaghetti, you know, spaghetti and a couple of other things. And then so you have to construct a bridge or something that can carry weight. And you would think, you know, he's this, this prodigy in the engineering world. He was probably always great. But in fact, he says, no, we were horrible. We did so badly in that. And it set this fire in his heart to say, what makes something strong? What makes it secure? What gives it resilience? And that journey has now led him to work on the tallest structure that humankind has ever attempted, the Jeddah Tower in Saudi Arabia. This building, when it's finished, is going to be 996 meters tall. I mean, that's just astounding. It's like four meters away from a kilometer, which as a side note, just makes you think like, guys, come on, four meters, like do something, put a little spire or a guy like holding a, a piece of spaghetti or something, I don't know, but get those last four meters. But the thing about this tower is the, the gravity weight of load that it has to carry is 860,000 tons. And that's double the amount of the closest tallest building in the world, double the amount. So what is it saying to us? If you want to go high, you have to go very deep. This man says you have to have such wisdom when it comes to the foundation of your building. And listen to what Jesus says. Read with me in verse 24. He says, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built on the rock. But he says, everyone who hears these words of mine and doesn't act on them, he says, they will be like foolish people building on the sand. So in this little mini parable of Jesus, he's not making the distinction that some people are building and some people are not building, that some people are hearing and not hearing. No, he's saying that the only distinction is that some people are hearing and obeying. They are reacting and some are not. So he's saying it's not that today some of us hearing this are building and some not. He's saying everyone is already building. Each of us are already building our lives on something, a conviction, a system, a belief. Each of us are building. The question is simply that Jesus is asking, what are you building on? And he says there are things that, you know, and Jesus doesn't mince word. He's not afraid to empty a church and to offend people because he says, guess what? You can be a fool in the way that you build. You can be foolish. And he says the way to do that is to build with things that have temporal value, to build on them, to make those things your foundation. So he's saying to build your life on a conviction like what matters most in life is money. What matters most in life is your career or your reputation or your sexuality or your you know, esteem in the community or career success or family or adventure. He says, if you build your life on that, you're a fool. Why? So in the gospel according to Luke and his parallel of the same story, he puts it like this. He says in verse 49, but the one who hears and does not act is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation he's saying you can build your life with many good things but none of those things were ever meant as the foundation of your life career is a good thing sexuality is a good thing money is a good thing health is a good thing but they are not god things jesus says they were never meant as foundations. You can have your house, the things you are building with. What has God given you that's good that you should be building with? Luke is saying that thing, that house of yours can be actually your foundation. And when that happens, when the rain comes and when those things are shaken in your life, man, as all of us have been and will continue to be shaken in this crazy, crazy COVID season. He says, when you are shaken like that, you will find yourself without a foundation. 
But here's the beautiful thing. He says there is wisdom to be found if you build on this conviction that obedience to Christ, to God, to follow Him, to know Him, to base your life on Him alone. He says that is wise because you are building on something of eternal significance and security, of something of eternal resilience. He's inviting us to build on Him. And then those good things, if God becomes my very foundation, it's not just something I do on a Sunday or something I give lip service to, but if God is my foundation, then all these other things that can be shaken, they find their proper place. Jesus is saying, man, a resilient life comes from a resilient heart. Build your life on me. What's your foundation? But the second thing is, is what should the expectation be that we should have? If you can have a resilient heart, Jesus says there's an expectation that goes with that. So read with me again. You can underline this in verse 25. It says, the rain fell, the rivers rose, and the winds blew and pounded that house, yet it did not collapse because it was on the rock. But verse 27 says, again, the rain fell, the rivers rose, the winds blew and pounded that house, and it collapsed with a great crash. He said, Jesus is making an extremely important point here. He's saying, it's not if the rain comes, it's when the rain comes. You know, many years ago, Shay and I, my wife, we stayed on the University of the Free States campus. And uh, they, at one stage, wanted to completely refit and redo our apartment. And it, you know, it's even better because it was, it was on their bill. So I was very excited about that. So we had to move out to another apartment uh, for the next couple of weeks. And they were building and constructing. And so every day, my wife would send me over to go and take photos of everything. Like, it, literally every single tile that was laid down. Here's, you know, photographic evidence of it. Every little splash of paint. But you know the one thing that I was never able to take a photo of and show to? You know what that is? It's the foundation. Because it's hidden. <laughs> you don't see it, actually. And Jesus says that is what life is like. Friends, when the circumstances of life are great, when it's sunny weather in life, then it's actually very difficult to see the difference between the foundation of sand and rock. In fact, they look so similar. The guy building his life on things that are not God, but just good. And the difference between the one building on the rock, it's very difficult to see the difference. And in fact, I would say it's easier actually for the guy building on the sand because the one saying, I want to honor God, know God, live for God, even in this incredibly difficult season, you have to take such great care with how you build. You have to have wisdom in how you build. But Jesus says, it's not in the sunny days. It's not if but when the rain comes, then the foundations are exposed. Friends, the rain will come. And can we be honest? Why has this whole COVID-19 pandemic, global recession, why has all of this been so difficult on us? Can I just be honest with you? I'll just say for myself, it's because I've realized that many other things that I actually have been basing my life on have been genuinely shaken. I've almost gone and reestablished my life on certain things and now they have been shaken to their core. But here's the thing Jesus says, it's not the first time that's happened and it won't be the last time. The rain is going to come. You know, when I was at school as a young boy, I loved running. I was good at it. It was my thing. It was my claim to fame. And then one day I went into a doctor's office and he said that they had found this, this abnormality in my ankle bones. And just like that, my career was done. I never ran again. And that thing that I put so much of my identity into, it was gone in a second. And my father, over three decades of his life, he had built one of the most successful and, and lucrative contracting companies in our province. I'll never forget one of my teachers once quipping, saying, you know, it feels like your parents are building everything in this town at the moment. That felt so good in my heart because I found my security in that company. It's always been there. It will always be there. And then at my first year at university, that company went bankrupt. My father was liquidated. And all those things that I had just based my my, my identity on, my security, and it was gone. 
In my early 20s, I started working for a church. And at one stage, we felt led to put up a building. And man, it was a season where we felt this church is unstoppable. The mission that God has given us is a passion project. You know, we are going places. And then one year to the date that we had put up that building, in a free accident, the building collapsed. <laughs> I'll never forget opening up the door to my car, stepping out and just looking at that building. And it felt like it was this microcosm. The destruction of that building was the destruction of my dreams. I had based my significance on this. Where are we going? You know, we've got three kids and our middle child, Benjamin, his, his name means the strength, the authority of God. And two years ago, after many tests, we came to hear that he actually has this genetic abnormality in his cochlea. And he was diagnosed with lifelong hearing loss. And, you know, I always felt so bad for people when you would hear these things. You know, people over there, people on that part of life, you know, it's, it's happening somewhere out there, but never to us. And it was devastating. Friends, I know in your life and in my life, Jesus says it's not if, but when the rain comes, it's going to happen. But here is the beautiful promise that Jesus makes in this text. He says, yes, the rain is going to come, but if you build on me, I'm not saying the rain is never going to befall your life, but I promise the rain will not destroy your life. Jesus says that if we follow him, the path of discipleship, following Jesus, does not make your life storm free, but it storm proofs your life. That's what Jesus says. I don't want to give you this emotionless heart in this very difficult season. I want to give you a resilient heart. I want to give you a secure heart. Yes, the rain will come, but I will be there with you as your foundation, as your anchor. The expectation of a heart like that says, I know the rain is going to come. I'm preparing for it. I'm building with it in mind. But lastly, what should the expectation then be for such a resilient heart in life? And the question is simply this, friends, why would we do this? Why would we build our lives on Christ? And listen to what it says. Read with me in verse 25 again. It says, the rain fell, the rivers rose, and the winds blew. And yet it collapsed. And here's the question. If I know that, why would I then make the choice to invest in Christ and God and in obedience and love for Him? And here's the answer. It's because our obedience, our love, our pursuit of God, of Jesus, is not based on some system or some religious practice, on some philosophy. But the invitation in this mini parable is that you should come and base your obedience, your, your following of me, your building on me, on this, on a person. He says, come and build your life, not on a system, build it on me. <laughs> build it on me, follow me. We do this because we have reverence for Christ. We have a passion for Christ. We have a love for Christ. We have a desire to know and to follow Christ. I love this. The end of this passage, it says, When Jesus had finished teaching and saying these things, the crowds were astonished at his teaching. Why? Because he was teaching them like one who had authority and not like their scribes. It was almost immediately apparent to the people hearing Jesus that he was not like the others with wisdom, with teaching, with technique. So many at the moment are telling us, in this season, this is what you need. Apply this, do this, chant this, pray this. It will help. But the people could see that Jesus was not a man with authority in his teaching or, you know, he was a man of great wisdom. But there was a weightiness in the man himself. There was an authority in the man himself. In fact, this moment's an example again. Most of the rabbis, the teachers in Jesus' time, they would always quote other rabbis. You know, Rabbi so-and-so says this, but Jesus never did that. He would say, you have heard it said, but I say to you. The weightiness of this man invites us to base our lives on him. 
I think this thought is so beautifully captured in Hebrews 6, 19. It speaks of Jesus and it says, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. You see, I will not have a resilient heart by gritting my teeth, by trying harder, by, by making it happen. No, it's going to be when I am consumed by this man, Jesus. It's love for him. It's knowing him. That's what he calls us to. If fear is going to drive you in the season, fear will have to sustain you. If, if obligation is driving you, obligation will have to sustain you. But if the love and the grace and the truth that we find in this man is what captures me, it will hold me and sustain me. So let me finish off. There's this amazing story that in 1924, these companies like Philips and Osram and General Electric, they all got together and they pretty much solidified this 1,000 1, hour standard for the light bulbs that we use. Up to that point, it was made from different stuff, but they had this kind of planned obsolescence put into all of their products. But there's an older generation of light bulb that, you know, it's just made from, just from different, it's cut from a different class. And one of these, world famous, it's found in a fire department garage in Livermore, California, and it's been active 24 seven, seven days a week since 1901. <laughs> It's almost 120 years that this thing has been going. In fact, it's outlasted three webcams that has been now, you know, just geared toward it. This thing just goes and goes and goes. It's got a strength, a resilience to it. And it reminds me, and let me leave you with this. Psalm 73, 26 says, My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart, my portion forever. In fact, that Greek or the Hebrew word for, for strength is the word rock. Yes, God, this season is so tough. It's so difficult. I've been rocked to my core, but you, God, are my rock forevermore. Jesus invites us and says, build your life on me because a resilient heart will lead to a resilient life. Let me pray for you. Jesus, this morning, God, I pray just for every heart that can hear this voice, that the Holy Spirit would come and comfort them and bring them to a place of a deep conviction of what it means to build on Christ in this season and beyond. God, may you come and redeem in so many people's hearts. May you draw them closer to know Jesus and Jesus alone. We pray that in your name. Amen. Thank you, Joe, for that word. I want to read to you from Romans 15 verse 4 in the Passion. It says, whatever was written beforehand is meant to instruct us in how to live. The scriptures impart to us encouragement and inspiration so that we can live in hope and endure all things. Kids in Fusion, remember to join for the fun-filled time of fellowship on Zoom this morning. And then for anyone who is new to our church this morning, I want to invite you to speak to us. Just send us a message on the chat right now so that we can connect with you during the week and make you feel a part of this family. And then right after the service, grab a coffee and join us for a time of fellowship where we can just be face to face with one another and pray for one another, that we can be strong um, and resilient during this week. I want to leave you with the scripture from Romans 15, um, verse 13, that says, Now may God, the inspiration and fountain of hope, fill you to overflowing with uncontainable joy and perfect peace as you trust in Him. And may the power of the Holy Spirit continually surround your life with His super abundance until you radiate with hope. Have a blessed week.